How you doing? I'm fine. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. These home visits by Reverend Larry Simmons in Detroit's Brightmoor neighborhood are a lifeline for families. So they need to go online and apply. And once they've applied, let me know so I can follow up with it. All right. Bye-bye. For years, Simmons saw a pattern in his neighborhood that concerned him. Kids that were missing too much school. So nearly a decade ago, he co-founded a coalition that helps keep kids in the classroom. Every neighborhood, you know, has these deep challenges. Our neighborhood school, a little over half the kids in the school are missing 18 days a year. For kids who are missing so much school, what's the impact for them long term? Their lives are changed. I think their lives are changed certainly to adulthood. When I see that children are connected not to school, but to what's going on inside the house, I see a child which is likely to be chronically absent in a year. Currently, 65% of students in Detroit's public school district are chronically absent, which means they're missing two or more school days a month. This is why Simmons invests so much time in home visits to make sure students stay engaged. So have you been showing up every day? Yes. But that wasn't always the case for 19-year-old Lamar Curry this year. Teachers called home concerned about his attendance. For the last year and a half, you've been stuck in this online, in-person, hybrid school thing. How is that working out? Honestly, it's online. I feel like I'm not learning anything. It's just like we log on, they just talk, then go to the next class. Over the past year, Chronic absentee rates have doubled nationwide, but it's worse than just missing a few days of school. Some three million students in the U.S. have disappeared from the system entirely. The pandemic has exacerbated um, the whole issue of attendance. Um, We have always in Detroit had an attendance issue. Charlonda Buckman leads a team responsible for keeping track of over 50,000 students. And since the beginning of the pandemic, they've knocked on around 16,000 doors to find absent students. What we found when we did a lot of our door-to-door outreach is that a lot of children were at home, but they either did not have the support or they couldn't navigate um, showing up for class using the device. What is missing in some of these households that make it hard for some of these kids to show up? Our parents are the essential workers. And so our parents have been challenged with finding support to watch their kids at home or older siblings watching younger siblings. We've had parents who had to go to work and they take the kids to the grandparents' house who really are afraid of technology or uncomfortable with technology. You know, we know that some of our parents have lost their jobs in this pandemic. So we've gone to houses where if the power is off, game over. There are too many opportunities for children to be lost and nobody notice. All those layers of accountability have gone away in this pandemic. So it worries the heck out of me that we're going to lose children and we're not going to notice until it's too late. There's no federal law or mandate on how to keep track of school attendance. That's something that's left up to the states. While nearly all have some attendance-taking guidelines, only 31 require it daily. And Florida and Utah have no state guidance at all. Shanice Hempel has four sons enrolled at this charter elementary school and is in school herself, studying to become a paralegal. Before the pandemic, her boys didn't have attendance problems, but with remote learning from home, that changed for two of them. It's hard, especially working with three of them on the computer and then I'm on the computer. It is from internet problems, or not being able to log on. Like my son's computer just shut off and it didn't come back on. So we still haven't got that back yet. Okay, so where's the star? Where's the triangle? So how many days was he at home without a computer? Two weeks and I will have to sacrifice my computer sometimes. I mean, you were literally choosing between your own schoolwork and your child's work. Right but his learning would always come before mine. Class is starting in four minutes. 
So I'm gonna clean up breakfast in three minutes. While most Detroit schools reopened in early March, their doors didn't stay open long. With virus numbers rising again and schools being a main source of new outbreaks in Michigan, the governor urged a pause on all in-person learning, complicating life for families like Hempel's that were just starting to get back to normal. Either you're present in the classroom to receive what's going on or you're not. So the problem is not just one thing. What are the conditions in the neighborhoods that you see the highest rates of chronic absence? Poverty. All over the country, you'll see chronic absence tracks right along with poverty rates. The higher the poverty rate, the higher the rate of chronic absence. The Biden administration's COVID relief package sets aside around $123 billion for K through 12 public education. A fifth of that is meant to specifically address learning loss during the pandemic through things like tutoring and summer school. But that will only help if students show up. So let's pray. Lord God, as we come to the close of today's time together, we just ask you to continue to cover Lamar. The indifference that we have today towards our children's future is like placing a knee on the neck of their future. They will die from this. And I'm not exaggerating. They will have consequences which result in premature death. They'll drop out of school. They'll get in trouble. They'll wind up in prison. If we don't find a way to train up our brown and black children, our poor children, America is facing a dire future 20, 25 years down the road. In Jesus' name we say together, amen. 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 I want you to give me a page of positive affirmations about what you believe about Lamar. And I don't want you to be modest, that you're brilliant. I know you think you're handsome, but you can even <laughs> write that down. These are affirmations that you're gonna to say to yourself every day. How important is a Reverend Simmons in addressing this issue of chronic absence. Uh, Reverend Simmons is very important. As you can see how he sat at the table and talked with Lamar, he is very encouraging. It's almost as a grandfather, father figure, which Lamar didn't have. Very, he's, he's very needed, <laughs> very much so. Lamar represents what research has shown that students who have a caring adult in their life are multiple times more likely to succeed than those who don't. It makes every difference in the world for Lamar to know that he could text me at seven o'clock in the morning or at seven o'clock at night, and that I'm gonna be interested in what he has to say and what he's going through. Now, I can't have that relationship with 300 kids, but I can have it with the 15 or 20. We need you know, more support, people that actually go to houses, make sure that you're all right and in the right path. There's a lot of people that don't have that support, don't have someone there that motivates them to get up every morning and to do what they need to do in order to succeed. I feel like we need just more mentors, more people out there that can help people into being successful.